Maybe I'm too long. I got my strokes back on hold on Jack switch back. I'm Beth Pintridge and I'm here with Cruz Contreras from the Black Lilies and we're here at the High Sierra Music Festival 2015. How are you doing today? Welcome. Yeah, I'm doing good. This is, uh, I guess, our third day here. We got here on Friday and played a Saturday afternoon set and a, a Sunday set. Getting ready to, to hit the road. So it's been, a, road. been a magical weekend. Headed to Chico next? Chico. We've got Chico. a couple days off in Chico, and then we're going to Oklahoma for the Woody Guthrie Festival. Awesome. So I just want to start out with, um, where, where are you from? I'm from Knoxville, Backstory. Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee, and um, at this point the entire band is from there too, so there's, uh, there's six of us, and uh, yeah, the Black Lilies got their start in Knoxville, and they're a Knoxville-based band. Awesome. Haven't been to Knoxville yet. You should. You should visit. Yes, we will. Nobody's we will. ever disappointed when they come to Knoxville. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it's kind of like one of those well-kept secrets. It's on our checklist. It is. All right. And how's your tour going? Tour's going great. We've got a real busy summer. And uh, like I said, next we're headed to the Woody Guthrie Festival in Oklahoma. And we're going to Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Very logical routing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we go back home for a little while. We've got a busy year. We've got a new record coming out in October. So we'll be touring full time. Awesome. New record? What's. Can I. Is the name out yet? It's called. Well, I don't know if officially it is. It's called Hard to Please. Hard to Please? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, we've been playing some of the new material. So we played that song on both of the sets here at High Sierra. Hear it. <laughs> it's a fun one. Um, are you enjoying High Sierra? Loving it. Yeah, this. This type of festival is right up our alley, and uh, I love these eclectic type music festivals because I, as an artist, it kind of gives you the, the green light to go in any direction musically. A very supportive audience, and uh, yeah, both of our sets were awesome. People dancing, cheering us on, and it's a very encouraging. A lot of people dancing. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Got to be there. Tell me about your band a little bit, and heard there were some new members. Yeah, we've got a, a handful of new members. We have a new bass player named Sam Quinn, and he's from Knoxville, Tennessee. We've been friends for a long time. And he's actually been to High Sierra before with a band called The Everybody Fields. It's been a few years back, so I know he was glad to come back here. And then uh, we have a new pedal steel player, Jonathan Keeney, Knoxville guy, is doing a great job. And uh, lead guitar player, Mike Seal. Guy I've played played music with on and off for a decade, and uh, honestly, a few years ago when I before I sang, he was one of the people who encouraged me to do that. So it's cool to have him come back around. And so it's new. It's not family. really new. Cause old friends. We know. We all go back ways. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And what's your first musical memory? Whoa! Oh, that's easy. Throwing you way back there. I know. Everybody. I had to go back. <laughs> uh, my dad. My dad was a piano player, not professional, but. He was certainly um, talented enough to, to uh, have done that if he had, had wanted to. So his routine was to come home from work and go straight to the piano and and play these songs while me and my brother and sister would run around the house. Yeah. And we go the house was situated where we could run in a circle. And every time we come around the circle, we'd be like, faster, play faster. Oh man. <laughs> and he was. I just remember being really take like he his he was. Um, he could play really fast. So you that's know? in your music. His hands were just like a blur. <laughs> and he'd get these really simple melodies and he'd embellish them and create rhythm patterns and embellish the melody and just like get it jammed and we just run. So yeah, that's my first musical memory. So he's a really creative guy. He was, yeah. He is. And can you describe the Black Lily sound? Nope. Nope. Can't do it. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. I don't know. Um, country music and bluegrass is a big ingredient in what we do and that's something I grew up playing so that's important to me to be able to uh, execute that and be able to perform that and I expect that of the players in the band but we all have really diverse backgrounds. I studied jazz piano, we have multiple jazz majors in the band, um, you know so anything's fair game. The Americana label kind of follows yeah. us around right now but 
I and you're at High Sierra Music Festival. Yeah. I don't think you could really like pinpoint any of the bands here. No, so. and that's great. We like it yeah. that way. And you know, it's funny in the music business, people love labels. Really, in any kind of business, because if you can label something, you can sell it easier. But I think if you have a little patience, like I think I've chosen to do with this band, you kind of make your own style of music, and you may develop your fan base a little bit slower, but they come to understand what you are, and then they um, they share that information among your fan base. So it's, it's like a it's like a club. What's your favorite moonshine? <laughs> um, being from East Tennessee, there's a a very rich heritage of moonshine production and distribution and folklore. If you've ever heard of Thunder Road, it's like one of the famous moonshine trails, which is right right through Knoxville. And yeah. um, so there's a lot of people around there that pride themselves. Is there a song about? Yeah, Thunder Road. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, and songs even inspired by that, perhaps like a Copperhead Road song. You know, it's it's a part of East Tennessee culture. And um, so my favorite kind is just like the clear high proof you can't buy it in stores and um, you know there is a lot of um, legally produced moonshine nowadays but it's not I prefer the uh, it's moonshine but it's a, little, yeah. it's a little soft it's not worth arguing over but <laughs> no. you, you know the real so stuff clear and, good. Yeah. clear and good okay <laughs> and can you tell me about some of your influences yeah. Well, I mentioned my first influence. That would probably be my dad on piano. And then um, I studied classical piano, you know, just like neighborhood piano lessons. So that was an influence. Um, and my brother's a fiddle player. So I learned a lot from him watching him play the fiddle. And we spent my high school years playing bluegrass and country music. So, and that was just kind of the beginning. Once I got into that, then it was like, I tried to just discover every kind of new music I could. Yeah. And I lived in Franklin, Tennessee, near Nashville, and studied bluegrass and swing and jazz and country, and ended up studying jazz piano in college, and then started my own bands. So everything, you name it, whatever, whatever I hear. Whatever you like. <laughs> okay, yeah. Can you tell me about your opening band from Germany? Yeah, that was a big surprise to us, a cool surprise. So we played in Kansas City at Knuckleheads, you had no idea what they were. No, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times you don't know who's going to be opening a show for you. Um, a lot of times, if we open a show for somebody, I suppose they probably wouldn't know who we are either. This is kind of the way it works. But it was um, sort of an interesting pairing, and uh, the couple, I believe, they're from Berlin, and they performed with um, Pasties, dude, Pasties? the dude and the lady. Yeah. And uh, our fans were like, when they first walked in there, you could see everyone kind of like turning their head like, huh? But hey, come on. Did the fans get down though? Oh yeah. Oh, like good. Oh, big time. It was a, yeah, everyone was <laughs> dancing and happy and we, uh, we actually got them up on stage with us there at the yeah. end. I think Bowman did a photo op with them. He, he put on the pasties too and uh, it was a great time. Yeah. Oh, I gotta pull out that picture. <laughs> I don't know. I've only shared it with Bowman. Oh yeah? We'll see. Where do you see the Black Lilies in three years? That's an interesting question. I used to not think too far ahead about it all, but I think um, coming to a festival like this does make your mind go there a little bit. Because you look around, you see what other bands are doing, you're like, whoa, we could learn something from them, or maybe we could make it onto that stage someday or get invited back. So I've always looked at the, the band as ideally sustainable, you know, something that we can do for a lifetime. Um, I intend to make music as long as I'm kicking. So just keep it steady. You know, keep writing songs, write better songs, write more songs, better arrangements. And uh, you know, I love dynamics in music, so I think the more we can push higher highs and lower lows and better grooves. I love it when people dance. That, that, I think that's something that I want to do. You have a dream on. stage to play at? Is there, is there this place you've thought I about? I do. Is like I hesitate to say. I've, I've got a few of them. Got and a few it's of cool. Them? There's like, we have some new songs on the new record where I've kind of simultaneous with creating the song, I have an, kind of a, an, an image of like where we might, that song yeah. might take us. 
So I don't want to. I'll keep an eye out. I don't want to jinx it, but yeah. I definitely dream it. Wish you luck and keep an eye out. Yep. It was great to see you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice talking with you. I was here with Cruz today. Appreciate y'all. <laughs>